Okay, we are going to continue with the session two for OTT services. Uh, right now, we are going to have five presentations, and uh, after the I propose after the presentations to be the, the, the part with the questions from the audience. So uh, the first presenter is Suada Hadžović. Ms. Suada Hadžović from regulatory body from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Ms. Suada, please. Good afternoon to everybody. My name is Suada Hadžović and I work for Communications Regulatory Agency of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, I want to express my and gratitude of my colleagues and general director in the audience for this opportunity to participate in such important conference. So our, com uh, our presentation have titled The Trend and Regulatory Issues in OTT. We have some technical problems. Nerabati. <laughs> 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 consist of uh, definition and taxonomy of OTT. Well, we stress the fact that uh, OTT providers are small companies, but uh, with big revenues. Also, we will talk about uh, asymmetric regulation between uh, telecommunication, uh, traditional telecommunication operators and OTT providers. After that, we will give some overview of uh, many other differences between them. Uh, and we will uh, present some numbers about uh, rising and falling in revenues of operators. Then uh, we will present uh, some activities in EU, and not only in EU, in India, Indonesia. Uh, we chose some examples which we find that, it, that they are interesting and uh, about uh, common um, Commonwealth uh, telecommunication organization. Also, we will stress uh, our role in uh, EMERG. Uh, in fact, uh, um, we will uh, be a reporter uh, of this uh, topic in EMERG workshop uh, in October this year in Rome. And after that, we uh, will give some conclusion. So that was the overview of our agenda. So first, um, we will talk about uh, definition of OTT. All of us know that the term OTT is over the top, uh, which means that uh, OTT providers offer services on operators, traditional operators' uh, network. So they don't invest uh, in infrastructure, just use it. Now it's Raboti. Hmm? No problem. So <coughs> it's about definition. Um, OTT is frequently used as a term, but it is often not clearly defined. Uh, well, we have, for example, BEREC uh, definition, uh, which is, um, from our view, uh, wider definition. It's about content, the service, or an application that is provided to the end user over the public internet. Uh, so, um, when we talk about BEREC, we have to uh, mention that uh, report uh, on OTT services from last year, uh, which classified OTTs as OTT 0, 1, and 2, uh, what you could see on this uh, um, photo. Um, 
Well, what is the important? Uh, this slide um, tells uh, tell us uh, about um, difference. Uh, well, we have, uh, for example, WhatsApp with so many, uh, so little employees, only 55, with full time, but uh, 600 millions global users. So uh, m maybe one kind of definition is uh, small investment but big revenues. Also with Viber and Netflix, etc. Um, as regulatory agency, for us it is important uh, um, situation, current situation, that we have asymmetric regulation or regulatory imbalance. On one side, uh, as you could see on this uh, slide, I hope so that it is visible, we have telecom service providers um, uh, very heavy regulate and OTTs without uh, such requirements. For example, for quality of service parameters, uh, for telecom operators it is required for OTTs no such requirement. And very important, em emergency services, we don't have uh, re requirements for OTT. So this is a competitive disadvantage to OTTs because of symmetric regulation. We have to, um, to think about uh, uh, this influence on uh, telecommunication co companies. So uh, this slide is another one photo about um, differences between telecom and OTT. Of course, in the first place, it's about heavily regulated industry for telecom uh, traditional companies and no regulation for OTT. And of course, very important, significant employer is telecom traditional and limited, limited direct employment is uh, uh, in OTT. Another te technical problems. Maybe it's about me. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so after this slide, we have a slide uh, with numbers, uh, trend of this uh, current situation expressed by numbers. Uh, well, uh, we use data from Boston Consulting Group report where, uh, where it is predicted that in Europe the revenues of traditional telecoms are ex expected to fa fall by 1% per year for next period and the revenue of OTT players will rise um, or 13% annually. Uh, then uh, telecom share will drop uh, from you will see it on next slide, I hope. Well, uh, we choose um, some examples of activities, um, regulatory activities in EU. It's about um, last year uh, presented the draft directive called the European Electronic Communications Code but uh, it's, uh, for now it is only draft. And uh, in uh, European Co Electron Electronic Communication Code, we have uh, that um, uh, OTT is covered uh, on this way. The new code uh, proposes that new online players who provide equivalent communication services to those provided with traditional telecoms operators are covered by similar rules. On the other hand, OTT services that do not use numbers, for example, WhatsApp, will be subject to more focused ob obligations, for example, day servers and networks have to be secure, disabled users ha uh, have to have equivalent access to day services, and day users can reach the EU emergency number. Okay, uh, for now this is only draft and we will wait to see the final document. Well, uh, very interesting activities regarding OTT uh, we have in Indonesia. Um, it's about circular 
letter um, the Indonesian government via the Ministry of Communication and Information issued a circular letter concerning the OTT services. Very interesting. You could see that uh, in the, uh, their view is uh, like this. OTT have to register its form of business entity and line of business and also submit periodical reports to the Indonesian regulatory authority. So we have to, uh, the obligation that, for example, Viber have to have some business entity in, in Indonesia. Uh, after that, uh, they have to set up a local contact uh, center for customer complaints and for uh, question. They have to use national payment gateway for paid OTT services. They have to use an Indonesian IP number and place a part of its server in a data center located within Indonesia territory. Oh, you, you have this slide. And they have to guarantee access to lo uh, lawful interception and collection of evidence in criminal investigation. Uh, for us, a uh, very, uh, very interesting uh, case. And um, uh, our communication regulatory agency currently um, uh, make overview of all, all, uh, all of these examples to, um, to make some, um, to make our view. Uh, we, we have um, now activity in India. Next one. Mm -hmm. uh, to come here. Mm -hmm. We have interesting uh, case in India uh, from uh, 2015, where, where they, a regulatory authority issued a consultation paper on OTT, and very uh, big document with 118 pages and 19 questions. And this is very, um, very interesting and useful for uh, regulatory authorities and other telecom companies because uh, uh, a lot of uh, work uh, is done in this document. Uh, some of questions are on slide. It's about um, should the OTT players pay for use the net, uh, telecom networks, um, and what pricing options can be adopted, etc. You could find all of these uh, uh, information on the web page. Next one is um, questionnaire of uh, Commonwealth uh, Telecommunication Organization. Um, we have uh, uh, many of questions, uh, very interesting. Uh, uh, um, in case that we uh, um, make some question for, for own country. Some of the questions are, should OTT service providers be made to pay some form of fees or taxes in countries where they provide these services and are not domicile, etc. Of course, you could find all of this on the web page. Now we want to stress our role in, uh, in EMERG group of regulator, uh, European Mediterranean uh, Regulators Group. Um, and um, we are reporter for October 10, uh, 2017 on this topic. Um, and we will prepare some question, questionnaire uh, where we access current uh, status of OTT services in our country, and not only in our country, but in uh, other AMERG member countries. After that, uh, all of us will um, propose some background data for regulatory view on OTT issues. So uh, I invite you or we invite you to participate in this uh, workshop in October in Italy. Well, after all of these examples, uh, examples we could uh, have some conclusion. Well, yes, we know uh, new technology uh, um, uh, should should be developed more uh, OTT shouldn't be uh, blocked by any party through any method, uh, and regulatory authorities should enable future deployment of OTT services to be conducted in a manner that addresses the prior priorities and concerns of all stakeholders. But we have uh, many tricky, hard questions 
to regulate or not to regulate? If regulate, in what extent to regulate, etc. Um, I would um, stress this word, all of us and regulatory authority and uh, telecoms should turn challenges into opportunities. That is the only way. Audit. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry about these technical problems. Uh, next for presentation is Nikola Ognenovsky from Makedonsky Telecom. Hello to everyone, I am Nikola Ognenovsky from Makenovsky Telecom, so my topic is OTT services, market and regulatory challenges. Since I am coming from regulatory department, I will be more focused on regulatory challenges, but definitely they are related with the market challenges. I will try to explain why the most of operators are trying to convince the regulators that there is no equal playing field on the market at the moment with this new changes in the market environment and definitely we can all say that uh, over the top services has really huge influence on the market and definitely we are living on the world of data tsunami where the global OTT services, service providers are definitely the leader in uh, this environment. We are following European communication code and every changes which are now happening Really, it's good that there is some small step there, but definitely we can conclude that European legislation is not follow the dynamic of market conditions which are happening. It's happened in the past with some other topics, it's happening now. The uh, legislation, definitely, we believe that it's slow. And yes, everyone wants mobile data, everyone wants mobile bandwidth. We know just here is one uh, short information. Uh, what is happening in 60 seconds in, on internet? You already know, but there is 700,000 uh, uh, Facebook logins. There is uh, Snapchat, half million pictures, so which is huge data. And really for this, there is access needed, huge bandwidth, and the question is, uh, who will provide it? What is telecomposition? And in this new ecosystem, definitely telecomposition is only one important chain because there is many other different players on this market compared to previous environment with telecommunication. Here are content providers, content producers, OTT global players, and very, I don't know what happened with this format, but anyhow. <laughs> uh, and uh, we are facing with a lot of critics from many consultants and uh, other industries that really uh, old traditional telecoms are maybe a little bit obsolete. We are not so fast and uh, we are always complained for non-discrimination. We have to adjust to the OTT uh, habits and players in new market environment. And maybe it's partly true, but definitely I would say that uh, from the other side, yes, we are aware of the possibility. And the fact is that these changes, we are looking also like possibility. We, are, we have partners with our OTT players. We have also our OTT services and we are trying to uh, really use this new digital environment on the market. But from the other side, the main question is really whether there is equal level playing, playing field for all providers of the services on the market. This is the main question and it is very clear that and the other speakers before me, they mentioned and the next is everyone wants to come to the customers. This is fact because digitalization trend is currently challenging every sector and everyone trying to come to the customer but the question is really uh, who will build the network 
everyone want to come to a customer, but someone have to build a network to build this highway to be really good quality and to allow access and to allow the transportation. And here is the role of uh, operators at the end of the day. But this cost, if you read some studies, definitely uh, there is 500,000 billion of euros in order to reach digital agenda in Europe, which is huge money. Yes, yeah, someone will say, come on, you will pay, you will receive the money from the end customer, this is the end story. But really, it is not so easy, and definitely there is many, many rural areas where there is no profitability. Payback period is more than 10, uh, 10 years. So it is really big challenge. And the other question is whether regulatory condition adds stimulation for investors. Great. Everyone will offer or the top uh, services on the Apple store. There is millions of them. But the, the road to the end customer is only the one. Uh, and while we are, like operator, while we are discussing for the uh, cost, capex optimization, negotiations with the, uh, with the regulator, in parallel, we are still discussing with the regulator whether OTT, cannibalization, uh, cannibalization of voice and messages happen. The fact is, and most of the consulting world companies, this is proving that in the future it will be even more and more aggressive. Still, we are debating whether there is substitute or competition between OTTs, I'm speaking for voice and messaging, compared to the others. Although I have here some uh, numbers, for example, OWN said that lost like direct impact from OTT services on telecom industry, it will be 386 billions of euros of in revenue. From the other side, McKinsey Company are to the little saying that really the percentage of uh, OTT services in voice and in the messaging, it will be really 22 in the more, most aggressive scenario for messaging, even 60%. And in such situation, we are still debate whether over the top services should be part of the market analysis, whether it's substitution of the messaging. So we are all using messaging, we know who is using SMS and who is using WhatsApp and Viber. And from the other side, we know there is a regulation, but they are stick, uh, like a European Commission, they are stick for this definition that this service has number, this service has not number, but at the end of the day, the question is what are using like customers and what is this impact on the telecom industry whether this is, a, this is the substitute and is the market people playing field for all the previous speaker also mentioned i will just say a few words OTT voice and messaging market capitalization is going very high for all these global players free of charge using of operators network this was the train with the picture NRA, if you ask something for the OTTs, they don't know. I, I'm speaking regarding uh, the communication with them. No investment required, no regulatory obligation will come later. Some influence on the national economy or paying taxes, I don't know. From this other side, operators have digital agenda. We mentioned really huge number of investment which are obliged to invest uh, in order to allow access and benefit. Quality of service, emergency, public safety, strict regulation, and the top net neutrality, everything else. Is it this battle fair? Okay, we can discuss it. And yes, <laughs> there will be always someone who say that can do it for cheaper. Yeah? But the question is what are the consequences on long term for these results? And what we want to, want to achieve on the long term regarding development of the ecosystems. And whether customers are aware of the long term consequences for this. So this is, let's say, more important on the long term aspects. Uh, what is thought in the business model? Freemium, it is famous word, everything is free. Who is using Viber here? Short market research. It's not forbidden to admit, okay? <laughs> And who is paying to Viber? Some stickers, $1, $2. I paid once for my kids, but the question is that, okay, it's free, it's good money, 
But if you're not paying for it, you are the product, yeah? So this is one of the main points, and the question is, what is the business model for them? And from the other side, it's free, but they're growing faster than telecom industry. When you ask for telecom industry, everyone said, how long do you have money? You're enjoying everything else, but the fact is that market capitalization of OTT players is bigger than the others. <laughs> Again, something like this. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, OTT, uh, OTT can, uh, is checking your personal contact on the smartphone. So we all know that yeah, WhatsApp would like to access your contacts. You're clicking OK. But what is most important? Igor doesn't have WhatsApp, but he is my friend. His personal information are in my, in my I have it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so the, the moment is that even if Igor doesn't have WhatsApp, his personal information are in the service of WhatsApp and they have it. I don't know whether it's allowed, whether Igor will be angry to me because I give it to WhatsApp. I don't know what we'll see. <laughs> my contacts, my location, my habits, my messages, everything else. From the other side, I don't know whether you know this wiring calls with this opt out opt automatically in your cases uh, or in, when, you, when you download Viber application. Okay, just short. Viber in, this is some kind of Viber options. When I am going abroad, I want to call to my wife. I'm calling on standard telephone phone, yeah? Hello, I'm calling, I don't know nothing. Somewhere someone is hijacking, shifting, and my wife is receiving on Viber. I'm not aware, I didn't allow it, and I receiving this standard call, I receiving some, I'm doing at least something which is a best effort call. Without my permission, without my knowledge. And now the question is when I complain to the NRA, they, can, they cannot do it, nothing. So this is one of the big challenges which we have to face it. And did you read the terms and conditions before accepting? For example, <laughs> When we discuss with agency for our terms and conditions, like operators, <coughs> definitely we are spending months and months in order everything to build by the rule book. And really, even for the small items, we have to be compliant, which is great because definitely, definitely customers should be protected. But some examples for terms and conditions of some uh, over the top players. Your use of this service is at your own risk. I don't know what this is. No warranties that your use of the service will not infringe the rights of the others. I don't know what is my communication with Igor now. So we will disclose your information to services, providers, and other third parties. It is also tricky. The fact is that we also, like telecoms, want to profile data to use for innovation services, but okay, it should be on some framework. And we should decide, that, okay. Maybe we will have more flexibility for all players, or we'll have strict rules against for all players. So this is which we are saying that there is no equal playing field. I know that, I know that this is global discussion and we really fight, but I think the time is now just to be more, a little bit speed up. And at the end, what we can do while waiting, I would say braver decision on the global, on the national level, several proposals, educate customers to increase public awareness of pros, but then also cons and risk of OTT services. Again, OTT services, we are not against. We are using them. We have to use it, them. We, are, we have partners, but the increased awareness of it, everything should be transparent, the same like uh, uh, telecom operators. Protect investors, because without coverage, nothing. Check the, the compliance of terms and conditions of global OTTs with national legislation. At the end of the day, we can send information to any area where OTT are with the head offices and say, sorry, but your operators is handling against our national legislation. It is legitimate right. 
So really, we can do it. We cannot wait for a European Commission at the end of the day. It is national strategy. We can request audited traffic and revenues because when we analyze the market, definitely we have to know the habits of the customers. And this can be used for the development of further steps of the national economy. This is also legitimate right to analyze and to ask. And this will definitely happen, but let's hope that we will not wait too much. I remember this was the similar like fixed and mobile telephony and long, long day by that mobile is not substitute to fix. And at the end, yes, it is. And this happened. Now it is similar situation and we have to work together for this aspect. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. I'm inviting, inviting Ms. Maria Rajkovic from Radl, Serbia. Discussion? After the presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Maria Rajkovic. I come from a regulatory agency for electronic communications and postal services of Serbia. And I will present you the topic over the top services. I know that my colleagues had a similar presentation. <coughs> I will try to skip the same parts, but there's no harm in hearing it one more time. So let's start from the definition that Barrett gave. OTT services present content service and application that is provided to the end user over the public internet. And it doesn't refer to a particular type of service, only to a method of provision over the public internet. And this provision generally occurs without uh, any involvement of the internet access providers in the control or the distribution of the services. So we can generally divide them in, the, in three categories. First one, OTT communication services. So there we have voice, video, uh, chat applications such as Viber, Skype, WhatsApp, Facebook. Also, we have OTT media applications there for video streaming, streaming such as YouTube, Netflix, etc. And the third category is other OTT services such as e-commerce services, advertisement. Etc. So OTT services are exponentially growing and OTT providers have the capacity to take the global market because they offer lower, lower costs for more innovative services and with that they are increasing the loyal user base. And as my colleague said, they usually use someone else's network and they do not invest in the building of the network to enable end user access to services. They're also not required to purchase a license in order to operate and offer services, and they do not guarantee any quality of service. On the other hand, telecom operators are territorially limited by their network, and they're required to purchase a license in order to operate and also, uh, they have to invest in their network infrastructures to be able to deliver services to end users with the desired quality of service. This also includes investing in new technologies and new approaches in order to use the resources more effectively and efficiently. So most expanding OTT services are voice and mobile messaging applications, and the most important for them is data transmission. So for telecom operators, their average monthly revenues per user are decreasing throughout almost all services except data transmission used by OTT market participants. So they are broadening, OTT services are broadening and they are demanding faster internet for end users at more affordable prices. So telecom operators have to find a way to compete with them and here the role of a regulator is very important. So there are some options for telecom op operators. Uh, first of all, they're in an unfavorable position. They now have to change their business models and strategies. For example, 
That includes redefining strategies, scopes of services, forming a new way of cost management. But more effective solutions are providing services independently, entirely, including connection and data transfer, all also offering their own applications that are competing with the, with the existing ones. And probably the most beneficial one uh, are the different forms of partnership with OTT providers. So the change is inevitable, and as network operators migrate to next generation networks, voice services will become software application riding over the network. And these changes are disruptive and inconvenient for those with a stake in the existing arrangements. But the benefit of change sometimes outweighs the cost. And regulators generally support innovation and they prevent fixed and mobile operators from blocking or degrading comp competing services. So let's look at the regulation now. Uh, the current regulation from 2009 uh, gives, uh, has one major shortcoming because that regulatory framework is giving a blurry definition of the electronic communication services. And I will shortly explain it. So, Electronic communication services are services normally provided for remuneration, which consists wholly on mainly in conveyance of signal. So the regulatory framework does not provide a clear cast guidance on whether the specific type of service falls with this definition and thus qualifies as a regulated service. And NRAs have that, leaves, uh, that criteria leaves a lot of room for NRAs to, for interpretation. This definition gives more a technical interpretation that's favoring a non-regulation of OTT services. As my colleague said, uh, we have three types of OTT services. One that can qualify as an electronic communication service, this Viber out, Skype out. One that, that is not, but can potentially compete with one, such as Skype, Viber, Google Talk, and the other services that do not compete with the electronic communication service. So shortly here we have the regulatory imbalances between telecom operators and OTT providers. As I've mentioned, licensing, quality of service, pricing is also a big question, interconnection, also no obligation for net neutrality, and number portability for OTT players. And probably the most important thing is privacy. There is a strict data protection and privacy requirement by the law for telecom operators. As for OTT players, they practice a limit, uh, limited and generally voluntary basis of privacy. Now we can look at the draft of European Electronic Communication Code. So this is a suggestion for the new reg uh, regulation. Um, European Commission suggested an amended definition of electronic communication services. And it's divided into three categories. Internet access services, interpersonal communication services, and other services. As we can see in this picture. So internet access services, that's the same. They're all services providing access to the internet and thereby connectivity to virtually all endpoints of the internet irrespective of uh, network technology and terminal equipment used. The new category is interpersonal communication services. So that is a subcategory that includes all services that allow direct interpersonal communication via electronic communication network. So the most OTT services belong to this category. Also, uh, it includes finite number of persons as determined by initiator. This excludes broadcast transmission, service from the scope of ICS, and also services that are not ancillary features of another service. So for example, here we have a chat feature that is a part of a video game or something else. Also, this category uh, is divided into two subcategories, number-based and number-independent. 
So number-based services are the one that allow a breakout to a public switch telephone network. So the one they're competing with electronic communication services, Skype out and Viber out, and number independent. These subcategories using numbering not for communication. For example, WhatsApp will be in this category because it, use an, it uses a number for identifying your, your user account. And also other services, the definition is the same because it mainly consists of the conveyance of signals. So here we have communication, machine to machine communication and broadcasting services, both of which do not include um, internet access or interpersonal communications. So all these services in all these three categories shall be the subject of a regulation uh, only if they are no, normally provided for remuneration. So the goal is to create regulatory framework that, ex that, that is supporting telecom operators and innovations of OTT players. But even with this draft, I don't think the telecom operators are fully satisfied because uh, OTT players will still have minimal regulation for some services. For example, instant messaging services that are eating their SMS service offering revenues. Now, let us look at the situation of the Republic of Serbia. So regarding OTT services, the current law does not include OTT services, but uh, RATEL is registering OTT operators because they are making income by providing services. And on 19th of May, we had registered two, uh, 32 VoIP operators and eight media distribution operators. On this slide, you can see some of the applications, OTT applications that are available in, available in Serbia. So I will first start with the media uh, ones. So the application, these applications are the prepaid solutions for watching TV on your smart devices. And we have ClickPink, D3Go from SBB, MTS TV Go from Telecom Serbia, etc. And there are also some applications for voice telephony, such as Orion Ring Plus and Unifon. Uh, those applications are used uh, in the range of your local Wi-Fi network uh, to be able to answer your call that you get on your fixed line uh, from any of your smart devices. So the conclusion. OTT services are growing exponentially and they're not like for like substitute for electronic communication services. But I think that telecom operators should see that these are good business potential for them. Uh, they can sustain their revenues with flat rates, but they can, gain, they, they can gain new users using strategies with OTT participants and developing their own solutions and applications. And as for the new draft, if the ACC is adopted by the European Union, uh, the effect of the new regulation will take place in the mid-2019 after the implementation into the national law of member states. And thank you for your attention. Later, Branko, after, after David Sonevsky. Uh, so I'm inviting Ms. Katja Zubinek from ACO Slovenia. Okay, hello everyone. My name is uh, Katja Kmet. Um, I'm a head of supervision this, uh, division um, in ACOS, uh, uh, Slovenian regulatory authority. Uh, since Wada and Maria were so thorough before me, I'm not repeating the same things for the third time now. So I'll just hopefully skip everything that was said already. So uh, we heard already what Berg uh, thinks and uh, what the definitions of Berg are about OTT players. Um, I will skip uh, this one. 
and you already saw this table and uh, we were already talking a lot about how telco services are regulated and OTT services are not. But maybe uh, one interesting information that also RCEP uh, was uh, had the opportunity to collect some uh, data from OTT providers and uh, this, um, uh, this was from uh, August uh, 2015, but uh, they so far hasn't used this uh, opportunity to do uh, anything about it. And also Administrative Court of Cologne in Germany decided in November 11 that uh, Google's Gmail service is a, actually electronic communication service under the present framework. But I think that this case is still pending um, in the court. So we already heard a lot about um, future regulation, the future framework, but uh, as we all heard now, it is still just a proposal. And I think that all NRAs are really involved in this um, process of uh, changing the regulation and we will see what will come out eventually. Um, okay, yeah, we know. We have number-based uh, inter interpersonal communication services and not those who are using numbering space and not. Okay, we heard this one again. <laughs> okay, so, but OTTs are very popular and they are a major driver of the growth of uh, internet traffic. Um, so, um, what is actually causing the problems? The entry barriers are quite low and uh, the value chain has changed recently, so it's not anymore about the, the network, the money comes from services and uh, content. So now we are questioning about the fairness of this uh, model. Um, so what uh, OTTs need or actually want? They just want fair access to customers. So they want minimal interference from governments, society, uh, society or competitors. And uh, they want to have a high quality internet at affordable prices to, so they can offer their services to end users. For this, they need a net neutral environment, of course. Um, so, what are consumers' perspectives? Uh, they just want to use those services and they are not so much, um, uh, from their, their perspective, these uh, OTT services, they fulfill their needs uh, for telecommunication services quite okay and they don't really mind that it's actually a data uh, service. Uh, um, uh, uh, fix that. So, um, but um, uh, telecom operators are emphasizing that uh, traffic management practices, which uh, they were not supposed to do, are important because uh, if you want to have a robust, secure, and efficient, and functioning network, this is important. Um, so what happened? It happened, net neutrality. Because of all these changes, um, maybe we didn't mention these CDNs before today, so also because of this traffic growth, uh, some new businesses have emerged and um, these OTTs, especially large OTTs, make uh, interconnections and uh, they come with CDNs closer to the client because they want um, best uh, experience for end users. So some uh, players, um, OTT players are now gaining um, a really strong, extremely strong position on the market. On the market. And uh, because of that, electronic communication uh, uh, operators are making partnerships with different OTTs to make offers um, more likable to 
end users. And uh, one of them, um, uh, not really, um, uh, not really polite, or how should I say it, net neutrality, zero rating. Um, already, 49% uh, of mobile operators worldwide op uh, are offering zero rating services. And uh, and another thing why um, net neutrality is also important is. Because of all these changes, consumers started uh, complaining because uh, of this uh, division of internet access service and specialized service on the same uh, on the same line. Uh, internet access service uh, quality was uh, worse, and there were a lot of other complaints: port blocking. Uh, then blocking of certain applications, uh, for example, uh, you can use the then uh, OTT voice <coughs> services. Then there is a lot of peer-to-peer -peer throttling, um, and so on. So, um, why then net neutrality? So here are some numbers that are concerning, and um, there is, of course, need to do something about it. But, um, oh, this is the, the picture of this uh, transition of the um, current uh, situation when uh, OTTs are coming uh, closer to end users. Um, to come to, um, uh, to the reasons for the net neutrality, maybe some other um, information about um, internet uh, growth. I will go through really uh, quickly. Here you can see that, for example, new generations only use uh, uh, these uh, social networks um, also for, um, this is so-called millennium uh, generation, also for uh, to contact them uh, for business, comparing to Comparing to the silent generation before 1944, when they still use uh, telephone services. Uh, then you can see what's happening with advertising, uh, how much, uh, uh, <coughs> what is the growth rate. Then you can see uh, how many apps uh, are being used uh, uh, with mobile uh, users. Then you see uh, what's happening to uh, video. Video is especially is the the, the biggest uh, cause for such a huge uh, traffic internet traffic growth. Uh, then you can see here the uh, social network popularity. Um, then uh, also um, how much uh, video views or said. There was already a, from uh, Nicola uh, some um, numbers, but here are some more maybe. Then uh, images, uh, messaging, and it's also that uh, we really need uh, not only um, uh, accuracy, but it uh, has to also latency has to be good for this new way of using internet. Um, so why internet has to be an open environment? Um, of course, uh, internet access service providers would like to offer as many as possible so-called specialized services because they can then charge for better quality. Um, but this uh, increase of use of special services could increase market barriers, and we have to be aware of that. Uh, smaller cups uh, could have a lot of uh, problems um, and could use more, must, must use then more effort to enter the market. Uh, consumers are not so much aware of those effects uh, because they cannot value the future services because what is not existing today, they don't, they don't really care. So we have to have others who will think about it just because of 
lack of their technical, legal, and economic perspective. In the broader uh, net neutrality debate, the overall goal is uh, to continue operation of the internet as an open environment, enabling innovation, competition mm -hmm. among services and providers, and enabling choice of, uh, and freedom to communicate for consumers. So this, uh, I'm pretty sure that everybody is aware of the regulation uh, um, that is uh, in place since uh, December 2015. I think many NRAs in uh, European Union are still um, in the implementation phase. Here are some most important articles from this uh, regulation. And now, of course, NRAs has to do their roles. Um, but uh, we could already notice some uh, violations of uh, net neutrality rules um, around Europe. Most uh, common are, as I mentioned already, zero rating practices. There is a lot of uh, port blocking. Uh, World Garden offers appeared and some other discriminative traffic management practices have appeared. So why zero rating offers are not really um, polite, actually, to uh, even end users? Because uh, internet access service providers is actually then the one who is picking the winners and the losers. As we heard today, Macedonian, uh, I think it was WIP1 or one WIP uh, operator is offering this platform, OTT platform. I mean, it's nice, it's um, one good service, you could say, for, uh, for their customers, but it could be even nicer if a uh, consumer could choose their own OTT service, not that this number or the OTT services are being predefined by, by the operator. Um, so smaller caps are now concerned that they cannot uh, partner, make partnership with uh, operators because uh, their services are not so popular, they're not so big, they're not so well known. So they cannot uh, grow the same way that these that are big now did before when internet was uh, all open. And uh, some, even some bigger caps are quite reluctant to the zero rating because, of course, um, uh, internet access service providers are want to have some payments for such uh, deals with OTTs because of large data consumption. Uh, there was this research uh, for European Commission uh, last autumn, and um, these are the dates from autumn 2016. Um, more or less correct. So these are the numbers of um, operators, ISPs, offering zero rating services in different uh, member states. And these are the types of uh, zero rating services that are being offered around European, um, European Union countries. Uh, Slovenia has um, a bit uh, longer net neutrality tradition because uh, we had net neutrality already before uh, 2015. So um, last year we performed four supervision decisions and prohibited uh, zero rating services. These are the services that were um, uh, prohibited uh, due to unequal treatment. So there was no throttling of the zero rated services once the data cap was reached. And um, these uh, all four cases are still pending in our administrative court. Also, three other uh, NRAs in Europe are uh, prohibited already, zero rating offers, Sweden, Hungary, Netherlands, and four others are in the process of investigating the zero rating practices. About port blocking, um, so uh, internet access service providers may engage in traffic management. It is uh, in the TSM, in the regulation, due to these two reasons. But so far, only seven NRAs reported they actually investigated national associations, so they know which ports are being blocked and um, um, how many. 
And only Finland, so only one country published and updated a recommendation about which communication ports can be blocked. Blocking is, um, I know you must, you, 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 you are probably aware of, but uh, with the poor blocking, sometimes also access to certain OTT services is not possible. So um, we would really need EU uh, harmonized approach. Here's another interesting um, offer. Um, it's a World Garden offer, Chat Sim, where you can buy a certain Sim and you just can as, uh, have um, use, you can only use a few OTT uh, providers, especially uh, the ones uh, uh, for chatting. Okay, next step. So we need a clear rules. So let's say, balance between regulation of the OTTs and classical electronic communication services. We for sure need data protection rules, a lot was said, so I'm not repeating. And consumer protection, general conditions, of course, transparency, privacy regulation. We still need net neutrality regulation and we need NRA's activities. And I hope you will find some more answers to this question. So this is uh, literature, and thank you very much for being so patient. Thank you very much, Katya. And the last presentation for uh, this OTT session is from Tevi Tsonevsky from Neotel Macedonia. And after that, will be uh, where will, uh, after this presentation will be the discussions. Hello to, to everybody. My name is Tidi Tsonevsky. I'm coming from Neotel, I'm business development manager. And I'll, I will uh, tell you some uh, specific examples uh, what uh, we have regarding our uh, OTT implementation. I know that uh, you are now OTT experts all, and I will not uh, give much uh, de details about the re regulatory issues. So a little bit about uh, our company. Neotel is more than 12 years uh, present in the telecommunication market in Macedonia. We started with heavily investments in optical infrastructure. In 2007, we became a VIMAX operator in Macedonia. Uh, the same year, we, we have a telephony service st started. And, uh, but we didn't have uh, the TV service uh, uh, till last year. So in 2016, we uh, start with pay TV service after almost three years of uh, development and integration of our platform. Why OTT? We uh, developed OTT te technology and uh, we see OTT as next step in pay TV. But uh, on, the other side, on the other side, we choose to start with IPTV business model. IPTV uh, business model is uh, we are bundling uh, pay TV with internet. So only our customers will have internet and uh, TV service. So we are not pure OTT operator. You will see why. Something about uh, the national market trends. We all know that mobile devices are, are driving uh, a lot of uh, digital uh, consumption. Uh, we all uh, want to have the best models. We all have smartphones and uh, all uh, video data and is mostly consuming by uh, these mobile devices. Another trend is that uh, entertainment and media companies are ent entering uh, this direct-to-consumer world, um, which was uh, which was uh, a new uh, trend. Uh, before that, uh, they were uh, they were using <coughs> operators to uh, to sell their content. Uh, why this is this is happening? Because uh, one example for ESPN, they didn't uh, uh, have OTT uh, service, so they, they lost some some customers. You will see from 100 million, uh, from 100 million customers uh, uh, this year, they have uh, about uh, about 87 uh, 87 mi millions. 
Another trend is uh, customers want uh, on-demand services more and more because they want to uh, be uh, being, uh, uh, watching. There are no ads there. Uh, they can watch uh, uh, the content any, on any screen, anywhere, and uh, uh, this service is cheap. You know that in the United States, uh, Netflix is about $10. Uh, next trend is uh, audit delivery for, for sports. Uh, this is the newest trend uh, for this year. BT Sport uh, uh, is to offer UFA Ch Champion League uh, uh, free to air online. So we should see how it will distribute to the end users. And the last uh, trend uh, which I mentioned is uh, a la carte packages. So uh, more and more customers are asking this kind of service, although operators still, it's very few operators who, is, uh, who, is, uh, who are uh, offering this to the sub sub subscribers. What are the significant uh, providers in the OTT marketplace? They are, they are coming from different uh, segments, they are content providers, social networking providers, and also operators. You know, you all know Net Net Netflix, uh, Netflix uh, has 86 million subscribers, then follow Hulu, Amazon Prime, which uh, was the last uh, uh, last company in this uh, segment, but uh, it's uh, very, uh, very uh, in, uh, growth, uh, very rapid growth of the customer base because of, of its original content. Then uh, HBO is here, YouTube is uh, uh, planning to uh, offer new services, which will be named Unplugged which will be live TV subscription model, and Facebook. Uh, not yet here, but probably he, uh, he will. Some regional players, uh, which uh, this, this, this was my choice. I think that Big Box is very uh, marketed here, with SVD service, Net TV Plus from, from Serbia. It has a lot of uh, live TV channels uh, from the XU countries. Orion TV, which I have on my phone and I and I'm watching, which is on, on, on live TV, ISCON TV, Voyo and Voyo in Croatia and Serbia as SVOD providers. What is our Neo TV uh, offer? We start to uh, uh, develop the Android-based platform on the set of boxes also. Uh, this was our choice because the, uh, we think that Android is a good uh, system which is very famous and uh, each customer uh, know how to use it. And there are a lot of content beside our platform that uh, he can watch on his TV set. Uh, our application have uh, a live and uh, possibility for live and beauty content, although we are uh, still using only live content. And also there are a lot of uh, advanced functionalities like EPG, multi-screen, MPVR, time shift, catch up. Uh, on the box, uh, subscriber can, can find Play Store, YouTube, Facebook, Skype, etc. Our customer se segments, uh, segment which we uh, like to have is uh, the one who like interactivity or technical, with technical background. Uh, the one who uh, wants to explore new things, who know how to use a lot of other application and uh, who will watch the content anywhere and on multiple devices. Uh, what were our opportunities uh, when we choose uh, this kind of uh, technology? We have a lot of uh, customer base who have uh, internet and uh, our telephony and we want to retain these subscriber, uh, subscribers but also attract new subscribers from other operators. Uh, one of the challenges we, we, uh, we were like to, uh, to have is to, uh, is to uh, offer the content anywhere on any device, which was a pretty new concept in, in Macedonia years ago. And also uh, offer some innovative uh, services and business model, like prepaid subscription for live TV, pay-per-view, pay-per-view per event, some ads maybe, and so on. With this service, uh, we want to uh, uh, increase our revenue and also possibility to expand uh, globally. What are the techno technological challenges of OTT? 
this is operator per perspective. Uh, video is delivered together with all traffic. So you don't have some possibilities. Uh, when you don't have internet, uh, then there is no TV. And uh, which is uh, definitely less reliable than cable and IPTV networks. Uh, all uh, traffic is delivered by unicast manner, which uh, if you have uh, uh, a huge customer base, which, uh, which are, are, are watching at the moment the, uh, some show, then there, there is a huge load on operator network. Uh, we all know that there's a, a big latency regarding cable networks, and also there is a different latency for different, for different boxes. This is uh, problematic uh, for live streaming. And then and, uh, the question is still, is it uh, uh, smart to invest in this uh, kind of OTT system, uh, knowing th that all these uh, di difficulties uh, which, are, which are present? The components of the system, uh, this is uh, some technical uh, point. Uh, we develop software, head end uh, billing applications, Android, iOS, and some software which was the quality of experience we, we, we named. Uh, it uh, should uh, show us the customer experience. So we are gathering information from the set -up box directly from the customer. Uh, we integrate set -up boxes, encoders, transcoders, we must both, and uh, st streamers also. Uh, our, our, our channel are encoded with RTMP, HLS we are using, MPEG-4, Unicast, and multi bit rates per channel. Then came content ch challenges. When we ask for content, we see that we are a newcomer in big industry and very small country. So our uh, power to negotiate some good deals was very, very, uh, very small. The content providers uh, are uh, asking uh, uh, to, to bundle their, their channels. So channel packaging is their trend. And uh, then we should ensure that uh, our system, our platform can satisfy their, uh, their security uh, requirements. So this uh, uh, entertainment in, in media industry is very unregulated unre with lots of low punches like exclusive content, platform li limitation, will get the rights on one platform, but not for the other. And also some feature which uh, we don't have, uh, all of this feature which uh, we could have on all channels. And also these regu 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 regulatory issues, pretty much regulation for uh, telcos on the subscriber side. We must uh, say that all channels in the, in the uh, mention all the channels in the agreement. Then there is quality of service, data protection and reporting and and reporting to the regulatory uh, agency. But pure OTT providers regulation is very limited or there is no. We, all, we don't know uh, who is our, our competitor in this market. Our business model, as I mentioned, uh, we started as internet plus TV, plus telephony. So uh, only bundle package we are offering with many content limitation. So only Macedonian channels have all these, uh, all these rights, all these uh, uh, features that uh, we could have, but other channels, international channels, we, we don't have it for, for all these features. Uh, but we see that uh, the customers are not interested in these features. Uh, they are asking just to have more and more ch channels, 200 plus, and is it possible to watch on and plus boxes with the same with the same monthly fee. So this was a little bit problematic, but we were going on. Some question of concern: Is OTT substitute for traditional pay TV? Is OTT telecom operators uh, is uh, OTT telecom operators or content providers business? And when the customer will accept new screens? At least in Macedonia, it was an international trend, but in Macedonia. We still don't see that customers are watching TV on other screens. And also, these uh, uh, entertainment and media companies, no thank you, we don't want more channels in the basic pay package. And that's all. So, I will explain some uh, specific problem we, we have. The most common problem regarding OTT technology is video interruption due, due to bandwidth limitation at the subscriber side. 
and about 60% of our all calls to our health center is connected with this issue. That's why we are using our quality of service software to see if uh, the customer, is, if these problems are real and uh, how, to, how to solve them. I'm not, uh, it's very uh, small uh, numbers, but uh, I will explain uh, a little bit. Uh, this is one, uh, this is from our quality of service uh, uh, system. We see that the customers is watching one channel, which is about 2.5 megabits per second. And uh, this uh, blue line is uh, it's, uh, customer, uh, customer average bitrate. And at some point, the customer will have problems because uh, their average is uh, lower than the uh, channel bitrate. And uh, there is uh, interruption there. This is also from this system. In this segment, you will see that here uh, we said that uh, uh, the player buffer is under uh, the, uh, the there is no uh, information in the buffer, so the player is sto is, uh, is stopping. And uh, this is all because the subscriber is is uh, is watching uh, the content on, uh, through his his Wi-Fi net. So uh, one minute more. One minute. Uh, what are our, our solution, operator solution, to use adaptive bitrates, which we are using, but uh, it's not, it cannot eliminate uh, the problem completely. Local cache servers or CDN networks, we don't uh, need this because we don't have uh, such uh, huge customers. And uh, we, we, we see that uh, Multicast OTD delivery, when it will be ready, it will be a good solution. And the conclusion is video audit opens the market for many players, as you see from other presentation. But uh, the IP technologies that, that uh, the internet is built on are not easy scale, easy scale, and many new technologies are approaching. So this is our concern. So OTT and network operators are equally responsible for better customer experience and also associated costs with this, and they should find solutions without ruining the net neutrality principle. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, right now I'm, I'm opening the discussion about this session, uh, but I would like to ask to be more uh, efficient and effective in this question and answers. First, Dragan. Yes, first was Dragan Chupuinovsky and the second was Branko Stanchev from Telecom. Thank you. First of all, I would uh, say that I'm happy to be uh, uh, that I was I'm happy to be a witness of such a productive uh, session. Uh, all the presentations were very good and uh, comprehensive, so uh, uh, I simply enjoyed uh, uh, the, the session. There were a lot of points to discuss on. Probably not. Probably for sure, there is no time for that. Uh, so I tried uh, to extract uh, the two key points that I wanted to raise a discussion. Uh, first of all, about uh, uh, adapting to OTT by the operators. It was mentioned in the presentation of Nino. It was also mentioned in the, in the presentations of uh, Mrs. Rajkovic and uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Katya. Uh, the main discussion and the main advice is that we hear from the national regulatory agencies for many years already ago are that operators need to adopt strategies which will uh, which will kind of uh, amortize the OTETA approach what kind of strategy would be that to stop investing in networks and start and start providing the same services as they provide so if it is that so, it is simple. It's no problem. But who will do the network infrastructure in that case? Who will operate the network? Who will uh, construct new and modernize the networks? Let me put the glasses. Second, it was mentioned to cooperate with OTT. On which ground are we going to negotiate with them? What is our standing position? In, in, in such negotiations, negotiations, they simply want the networks to provide services. So uh, there were maybe some tries to do 
such corporations. Maybe there are some cases of cooperations between uh, operators in, such in, in, in some countries and uh, uh, OTT players, but it is not a practice and it is not feasible because there is not the, it is not the same stand standing point. Now, in the second part of my discussion, I would uh, uh, more focus to the presentation of my colleague Nino. First of all, I was delighted with the presentation. It was an excellent presentation, very comprehensive. Um, almost all the key points were mentioned in the crucial were mentioned in the presentation, and it is a it is the same position that we as operator here uh, share with uh, Makedonsky Telecom. It was very attractive also and creative. That's very important to say. It, it kept my patience uh, all the time during the presentation. Uh, I would, to this presentation, I would just like to, or maybe make some stronger advices and, re and uh, requirements to the National Re Regulatory Agency in Macedonia. And that, is, uh, that was mentioned in the presentation, but I'd like to, to make it stronger. Uh, it is time to start thinking and acting to make a uh, appropriate position of the operator and OTT players in our country. That means we have huge volume of regulations imposed on operators. On the opposite side, there is almost nothing on OTT players. That's not okay. There must be appropriate balance. If we keep uh, acting like until now to deal with somebody that we have in front of us and don't care about someone that is untouchable aside, it will not lead to, to appropriate development. The monies, the revenues and all effects of the market are in continuous uh, de decrease. So uh, this is not a suitable uh, ecosystem in the industry. Uh, at the end, Nino, thank you again for the speech. And it, uh, it deserves not only an applause, but standing ovations. <laughs> thank you, Jordan. Uh, the, excuse me, the next one is Gran Constanzo from Telecom. <coughs> well, uh, uh, I have only <laughs> I have one pretty short question, I would say. Because the current discussions for the same topics are happening in EU, in Brussels, the question would be, is there any, in, and you know, the reasons why we need some change is obvious, because of the unfair discrimination, I would say, uh, of, the, of the telecom operators. So my question is very simple to the, to the regulators. Is there any willingness, intention, and courage to make the first moves here on the Balkan, in the region, uh, and not waiting uh, the regulation first to happen in Brussels and after that mirror it here for this region. Is that possible? Is there any plan to do something like that or we are going to wait and just copy what is coming from Brussels? Thank you. I hope so. Maybe Sinisha will give more precise answer. Uh, I, I would be. Uh, I, I, I will try just to answer you very shortly because I think that the lunch is already served, and uh, <laughs> uh, um, you know that uh, all the countries in the region um, are following the regulation which is imposed by the Brussels. Um, uh, as a small countries, I don't believe that we, even if we want to have the opportunity to impose some regulation on OTT services, I don't believe that. Um, uh, we may do that because, uh, on the other side, um, uh, I, I believe that such a regulation would be just detri uh, on, uh, uh, detrimental to the end users because I don't believe that the uh, OTT services, if we ask them to uh, um, uh, to notify here, in, let's uh, say for example in Macedonia, to notify uh, themselves uh, Facebook. Uh, with just two uh, millions uh, in uh, inhabitants here in Macedonia, I don't believe that they will accept that. They will just leave the, the market. Um, so uh, we believe that the directions for the uh, approach of uh, this problem first need to come from the from the Brussels. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Please. 
is from next time. Sorry, it's hello. Good to hear that uh, we are. Oh, yeah, sorry. After. <laughs> okay, hello, my name is Nenad Vidanovsky uh, from Global Net. Uh, I will not. I'm not representative from any telecom, and uh, I'm going to talk as a consumer side, just for the OTT services. Unfortunately, I don't uh, actually like or uh, the the presentation from Nicola, because um, as he said. Free services, they are not free. First, for, for example, a Viber, you have to get a number and to get access to, to that uh, service. Afterwards, if you want to, to have that service, you have to pay for the internet. And then you have to go again to the telecom operators uh, all over the countries. So you have to pay. Um, you say that it's a quality issue. It's not a quality issue because uh, the regulation is done by the consumers. If I am not uh, satisfied with the, with the service, I'm not going to use it, as all the other Android applications that I have on my phone. Uh, you mentioned that uh, the question is how to get to the consumer. It's not how to get to the consumer because it's very easy. Uh, it's how to get paid from the consumer. I'm talking about the telecom side. So uh, if, if you start seeing that as a service who is free, then maybe you're, you're, you're going to get uh, drop the, the revenue. So I would say that if you start regulating the, the OTT services, then you, have, then you have to talk about the OTT services that telecoms are providing. For example, you're not willing, let's say, to talk about the, the OTT services that you are providing, like Loop, like hosting services, like domain services, like all the other things that you're putting on the top of the service that you are providing. Uh, on the other hand, if you're talking about regulation, then you have to talk about regulation, all the other things like Maria said about e-commerce. For example, e-commerce is having a great impact on the real shops that are working on, on internet. I think that you, you have also used AliExpress instead of using real shops in, in Skopje or in Macedonia. And you are making a huge impact on, on their revenue. So I would say if you start digging up, you will get buried by the sand. Yeah, just short answer. Okay, with part maybe we can agree. But when we are speaking for the free services, the question was, what is the Viber model and whether you are paying to Viber? No. No. So this is the next step, how they are making money and the personal data and everything else. Absolutely. But okay. Okay, if you are satisfied, the other question is whether we are, most of the customers are fully aware of the terms and conditions which uh, are signed or agreed uh, based on the over to top services. And uh, whether we should increase this uh, uh, awareness, we, like operators, like uh, institution and everything else. Of course, at the end of the day, it's customer choice. But before they make the choice, they have to be aware of all positive and negative aspects. Just transparency. Wow. With part I agree, it is complex and yeah. Why we as an operators are not available and allowed to do the same business model as Viber to sell the customer data to work with the customer's data and so on. Yeah, strictly Okay. Maybe I will try to I will try to give you an answer, Gloria Christoph, again from Makedonski Telecom. Uh, first, I would like to appreciate that uh, uh, we start this we initiate this discussion two years ago. And it was like we are asking something from the operator's uh, side and the regulator is ignoring the discussion or at least just in listening mode. Now, more than happy because most of the regulators has the presentation like they are presenting from the operator's point of view. Now we are only looking for uh, in future they will have enough courage, enough courage to undertake something. Uh, as an answer to, to the Global Net 
Uh, we are not looking for a regulation of OTT services. We are just asking for, for a level playing field. This means equal field for all participants on the same market, because we are talking about broader market. And also, uh, most of the colleagues are not tackling the issue of security. They are not tackling the issue of safe harbor regulation, because we are not in the same position. You know that the most of the uh, most of the OTT players are uh, based in USA, and then they have the possibility to do whatever they want with the data, with your data, with my data, and this is endangering even national security in some way. So we should be very careful. We are not speaking only about the money. We are speaking about new business model and the new uh, uh, telco ecosystem, not telco but broader ecosystem. So therefore, someone should. Uh, take this first step. Now, uh, the European Commission is hesitating to do something. It's very, you know, going step by step, but the time is very short for us. As most of the colleagues mentioned, we are heavily investing to provide this which OTTs are valuing from. So Thank this is the story. Thank you. Thank you, Blagoj.